So just a couple hours ago, I stumbled into one of my new favorite phrasing patterns inside of the minor pentatonic scale. Check this out. Hey there kids, it's a brand new installment of Weekend Wank Shop, here with your good buddy, Uncle Ben. So earlier today, during a lesson, I came across a really cool phrasing idea inside of the minor pentatonic scale. It kind of uses two strings, slides all over the neck, it's really versatile. You could phrase it a whole bunch of different ways, and I immediately knew I had to share it with you guys here on my channel. So on today's video, I'm going to show you guys the phrasing concept and a really cool lick that uses it in A minor pentatonic. That way you can get it under them hand fingers and start shredding today. As always, this video is brought to you guys by everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Sign up today, even for just a buck a month, you're going to get access to downloadable tabs, backing tracks, bonus lessons, and so much more. This week, everybody who supports my channel, even for just a buck a month, gets access to a very special bonus video that goes along with this one, showing you guys the origins of this lick, as well as how you can use it to move up the neck as well. So don't delay, sign up today, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Thanks. Gear-wise, for today's video, I'm once again using my lovely Gibson Les Paul Custom into the Fractal Audio Axe Effects 3. But before we get into that lick, let's hear it again at stepdad speed. <laughs> Okay, so this lick is based around the A minor Pentecostal scale. So that means we're going to be using the notes A, C, D, E, G, and A in various positions across the neck. Also going to be using that E flat, the flat five there, in that opening salvo of notes. Okay, start off here with the E note on your G string, fret number nine, and slide up to the root note A on fret number 14. Now from here, we're going to play this pattern. Okay, so what I did there is I started off on the D note on the B string. I picked that with the downstroke and did a pull off back to the C. Then I root note A up here with another downstroke. This entire lick is nothing but downstrokes, so it's James Hetfield approved. Okay, pick, pull, pick. Next, what you're gonna do is to move that top note up one fret. That's that flat five I mentioned earlier. Now I did a pick stroke, a pull off, a pick stroke, a pull off, then back to our root note. So it's kind of like single pull off, double pull off. Move the top note up a fret here to E. We're gonna do single pull off, then back to the double pull off on the E flat. Okay? Let's try that again. Just like that. Now after this, we get into the sliding part of the lick. Now what we're going to be doing here is starting off in that same position that we began with here. So the D note pulling off to C, then to our A note, then go back to the C note. Down, pull, down, down. Really important to pick it that way. Down, pull, down, down. After that last downstroke, slide down to the next note in the scale, the A note right here in front of number 10. After you slide down, you're going to do a hammer on pull off back to the previous position you were in. So hitting that C note again. After that, play one more downstroke here on the G note. That is this entire phrase in a nutshell, and it's really important to notice that all those notes that we played, there's only four pick strokes, and they're all downstrokes. Down, 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 down. One, two, three, four. Really important to get that down. From here, we're going to play the same idea, but from this position in the scale. So start off with that C note again, pulling off to A, downstroke on G, downstroke on the A, okay? Slide down to the next note in the scale, hammer on, pull off, then that last downstroke. So the second section is down, 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 down. From 
here we're gonna play the same idea from this position in the scale. So start off with the A note here, pulling off to G, the E note, then the G note right here again, sliding down to E. Hammer on pull off, and then you're gonna play the D note right here. Oh. There it is. Okay, so so far you should have this. And at this point, I just kind of descend down that kind of root position minor pentatonic scale we all know. To keep the phrasing consistent, I did a pull off, pick, pick, pick. Okay, I lied. There's one upstroke in the entire lick. Down, down, up, down. It's right there. And that is the entire lick in a nutshell. Let's try it out one more time together here. Isn't that a tasty one? Now again, this is all downstrokes. You gotta play this really aggressively, really get into the strings. And you know, if you're like me, I'm kind of a, a downwards pick slanting player, Troy Grady style, you know? So my downstrokes are kind of uh, being played with the pick held at this angle. I call it the paintbrush technique. I feel like I'm painting the paintbrush down the wall. That makes those downstrokes really slide onto the next string really effortlessly. If you hold your pick flat, you're gonna feel some resistance doing those consecutive downstrokes. It kind of fights you a little bit. And God forbid if you hold the pick like this, like your paintbrush is going up the wall, in other words, you're gonna feel a lot of resistance. So kind of point that pick so that the ass is towards the ground and that the tip is kind of going towards the ceiling a little bit. And it's gonna make that glide across the strings much better. Watch the pick from this angle. It really just kind of glides effortlessly across the strings. Now, if you've never played any licks like this with consecutive downstrokes, I recommend you take some time to kind of familiarize yourself with the technique I call pick parking. So in other words, I'm not just playing consecutive downstrokes like I'm doing an individual picking motion for every one of those. You'll notice that after I play the downstrokes on the G, the pick kind of parks itself on the next string, on the B string in this case like that right there. It kind of preloads the next note that you're going to play, you know? Every one of those, I'm parking the pick on the B string. Again, this preloads the next note and it just also kind of stops the velocity of the pick from going through and, you know, striking the next string like that. So this is a really handy technique to get used to if you're kind of getting into the economy picking thing. Uh, that you see guys like Eric Johnson and Ingve and Frank Gambali, Brandon Ellis, tons of other players use this technique too. So try to get used to parking that pick on the next string. So I broke away from the pattern there at the end, but you could continue this down as far as you want in the scale. That. you could take it down any two strings. So whenever I learn licks like this, I look at it as an opportunity to use this idea in any other occasion where I find the strings um, arranged in a similar manner. So in other words, this is a lick that will work anytime I have two notes on one string and then a single note on a lower string, right? So that could apply to like even, like let's say arpeggio shapes. That's an A minor arpeggio, and I've got two notes on one string, one note on a lower string. Kind of a cool idea. Again, using that same concept, but playing through those arpeggios of A minor, G, F, and E. You could use this anywhere that you have that arrangement of notes. Uh, diminished stuff. Ooh, that could be really cool. That's oh, not right. That's freaking sick. Play that slow again. I like that a lot. I just came up with that.
freaking sick. Again, I'm totally gonna use the crap out of that. And that's just me repurposing an idea that I came up with in a lick, which is what I advise you guys do. Don't just learn this lick and you know dump it into your own solos. If you do, you have to give me at least like 10%, right? But rather, you should take a look at this and say, where else could I use this, you know? Use these phrasing ideas as a, as a seed to plant your own shred garden, as you will. And like I said, in the Patreon exclusive video, you're gonna get even more insight about how you can use this lick and kind of where I came up with it, as well as how you can take it up the neck as well. So if you like this concept and wanna get even more out of it, sign up to that Patreon page today, even at just a buck a month, you're gonna get access to the tabs to go along with this, some practice tracks that I made so you can get it up to speed really fast, as well as the bonus video showing you how to get even more out of it. So check it out, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Thanks a lot. So there you go guys, a smoldering hot pentatonic phrasing idea to add into your own playing, whether you're playing blues or jazz or blaz. It works in both styles, country and western, wow. Let me know what you guys do with this one. Tag me on the Instagram with any ideas you come up with using this lick. I'm at Ben Elder Guitars on there. Just uh, give me a follow and tag me with your own interpretations of this phrasing idea in the key and melodic style of your choosing. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, mash that bell down there for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold and all that other jazz. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. I think for myself, it's time to get away from here and make this, uh, well, the Patreon bonus video I mentioned earlier, as well as get myself some dinner. But as for you guys, I recommend grabbing your guitar and putting this phrasing concept to work. Let's click it. More picking.